Hey YouTubers and welcome back to Tony the Technician channel. And today we're going to be going into how to properly drill and tap a hole. Now this could be a couple different scenarios, whether you're working with a blank slate and you're going to drill the hole itself and create the threads, or if you're working with a pre-existing hole and you're going to enlarge it or recreate the threads. It's a whole nother video on restoring threads, but today we're going to be focusing on creating those threads. In my scenario specifically, we will be enlarging a pre-existing hole and creating new threads. It'll be changing the thread pitch and everything, uh, but I'll still go over the steps as to how you would do it if you were to be working with a blank slate. So I'll include all of that. I'll include the tools that you'll need some of the different taps that you would need for each scenario, whether you're working with a through hole or a blind hole, as well as some of the other materials that you'll need for setting yourself up for success in drilling and tapping a hole. So I really hope you guys find this helpful and I'll try and include as much information as I can, as fast as I can, while still being, being clear about it. So if I forget to mention anything, drop it down in the comments for the other viewers. And as always, I really hope you guys enjoy. If you guys do, please make sure to hit that thumbs up Leave a comment down in the comment section. And as always, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Let's get into this. Some of the things you're gonna need is your tap and die set, obviously. Then the other nice thing to have, if you're doing, if it's just one shallow hole like what we'll be working with today, it's not a big deal. But if you're doing multiple or if you're doing deeper holes, then it is best to get yourself some cutting oil. If you don't want to get cutting oil, WD does actually make a cutting oil specific WD version, but WD will work as well as like a three in one oil. These still work perfectly, but if you're going to be doing this a lot, you might as well just get a cutting oil. But if you're just trying to do a couple things here and there, those items will work for a cutting oil. Next up, you're going to want a center punch. If you're starting from a blank slate, not using a pre-existing hole. Then next thing you'll want are your drill bits as well as your drill. And that's basically all you're gonna need in order to get this job done. If you want, uh, you can always get tap sockets and other miscellaneous things, but if you're just you know, trying to get the job done and work with as little as possible, this is all you'll need. So getting into it, a drill press would really actually be preferred. Most situations, you're not gonna be able to use a drill press, especially like let's say you're working on a block or um, you know, any large item that you can't just throw in a drill press, you're kind of eliminating that. That does come in handy on smaller items like this because you can set it in there and you're, you're going to make sure that that drill bit is going in that hole perfectly straight. Whereas a drill, it's kind of doing it by eye. So you got to do it as pre precise as possible. There are two different types of holes that you're really going to be dealing with and that being a through hole and a blind hole. This is a through hole. A blind hole would be if the hole was only drilled uh, partially through, kind of like if you look at this hole, it would be like that. There's still material on the other side. You're literally only drilling in a certain percentage of the material and creating threads from there. With a blind hole, you can't use a tapered tap like most kits come with. You're going to need a bottoming tap. That's if you need that thread to go all the way to the base of the hole. Because these are tapered, it doesn't start actually creating the threads until three to eight threads into the actual tap. This is to help you get it started in the hole and make sure that you're getting in there nice and straight, creating the threads that you want nice and straight. You can still use this on a blind hole to get it started and then you can come in with a bottoming tap. When doing a blind hole, it is very important to keep the hole clean. It's always important, whether it's blind or through hole, but in a blind hole, that material doesn't have anywhere to fall out the bottom. So that material is building up in there. So you either have to remove the tab, clean, keep cleaning it out, making sure that it's clean in there so you don't get some material stuck between your tap and the threads that you're going to create, messing them up. Uh, another thing, they also have spiral bottoming taps that you can use and that helps actually pull the material up and out of the hole. So that is another route you can go. The next thing is to really, before doing anything, figure out the fastener size that you're going to be working with, such as this. I bought this. This is a tip holder for work. This is for my tools. This is the holder for it. Well, I didn't pay attention when I purchased it and this is not the correct hole for my tips. So 
what I had to do is go in and enlarge it. This is quarter by 20, I believe, and I need it to be 5 16 by 18. So basically what I did was I took my tips or you take your fastener and you find the one that fits your fastener. That's the easiest way I do it. You can also use the thread gauge. This will help you determine your thread pitch or how many, you know, whether you have a fine thread. This is going to be an 18. So if you didn't know that, you would just use these, find the one that lines up perfectly into the grooves of your threads. And now I know it's a thread pitch of 18 and I know it's a 5 16 Now that we know what we're working with, now I can figure out how to open up these quarter inch holes to 5 16 by 18. So now I know exactly what tap I'm going to need. But once you figure that out, you can't just go using that. You go to the 5 16 by 18 on your chart. You can find these online as well. Very easy, very handy to have. So for this, the correct tap drill size will be 17 64 And then sometimes, depending on what you're working with, if you don't have, let's say we're working with quarter by 20, the correct tap drill size would be a number seven drill bit. If you don't have that, the closest next thing would be 13 64 Well, that is going to basically get you as close to a number seven as possible. You're still going to be able to create threads and it's still going to work but you don't wanna use that with something that is going to be using or having a lot of torque applied to it. That isn't going to have as good of a bite as it would if you use the correct drill bit size, but so just keep that in mind. If it's something like low torque application like this, this is literally just holding my tips. If I didn't have the correct drill bit size, I could use the next suggested drill bit size. I just wouldn't be able to use it on something that needs a lot of torque applied to it. So it would work perfectly for this. After that, the important thing is to keep the threads clean while you're tapping, as well as make sure the threads on your tap are always clean. You don't wanna be running in this after you've used it a bunch the day prior and you run it in with a bunch of material gunked up on it and you end up destroying or not even creating threads. Let's say this is the material you're working with. This is going to be where you're gonna be drilling. You figure out where you're going to drill your hole and you need to place your center punch and that creates a divot or an indentation into it. This is so you know your drill bit's going to start exactly where you want it. Your drill bit will sit right on there. Once you've done that, you want to make sure that you're drilling at a perfect 90 degrees or as perfect as you possibly can. You don't want the drill bit going in crooked or anything like that. And you need to look at it from both directions, this direction and this direction to make sure you're not tilted this way or this way. Or you wanna drill it very slow, making sure that the material is removed after you've drilled it. And then you want to start tapping very slowly. There's no need to hurry during this process and make sure that tap is clean. The rule of thumb is four turns in with the tap, one turn out, releasing some of those threads. If it's a blind hole, I may back it out even further, but if it's a through hole, I'll do four turns in, one turn out, or just until I hit resistance, then I stop, back it out, and then go again. Once you've done that, and you've drilled and tapped your hole, then you want to spray it and blow it out, clean it out as best as you possibly can, so you're not gonna mess anything up afterwards installing that fastener. But now we're gonna get into actually enlarging this and I'll show you exactly my process and I really hope you guys enjoy. I have it clamped down to my vise here. This is a little piece of bill of aluminum and it's anodized. So I don't wanna mess it up too much so I got some soft jaws on here. But other than that, I have my recommended drill bit size, 17 64 and I'm just going to go ahead and line this up here and what you're looking for here is to make sure while you're drilling you're not tipping in any certain direction and you want to check it from both this direction and this direction just to make sure that you're straight up and down the real importance to this is to try not to waller the hole out when you're going down try not to lean the bit too much, otherwise you end up wallering this out bigger than the drill bit, and then you end up not getting full thread when you go ahead and use your tap. Now when going to tap, 
I just want to make sure that it's nice and clean through here, but you can go a couple different routes. So here's your tap adapter that comes with the kit, at least the kit that I have, and I have the tap in here. You can put this in here and create leverage this way, or you can do the T handle so you can spin it like this, which is a nice option. Or you can put your bit directly in this built-in T handle and uh, use it that way. I don't prefer it this way if I don't have to. I actually like using a ratchet. You have to be more careful just because it's easy to see with a tool like this if it's canted to the side or anything, whereas a ratchet, you're only looking at one side. But with this and the material I'm working with, I'm not too worried about it as long as I can keep this straight. Now, since this is a through hole, I don't have to worry about that taper. This taper is going to help me start the hole, make sure that I get in there nice and straight, and then I'll get into the threads. And I just thread this all the way through to where the taper is hanging out the bottom and it gets to the actual size, thread size here in the main portion. So I'll just go ahead and start working it, making sure to stay as straight as possible. All right, so once I'm in and I feel like I'm straight before I go actually getting the main threads into the material, just wanna make sure I'm happy with it. And uh, then I do about quarter turns with the ratchet and then I'll do a few full rotations and then I back it out some. And then if you don't get a full, you know, few rotations, if you start to feel any binding, just go ahead and back it up just a few turns and then proceed back. And then, like I said, if you're working with a blind hole, you need to make sure that this material is actually coming out of the hole. Uh, here, most of the material is either going to fall out the bottom or come out the top when I back it out a couple turns. And then I always back it up a couple just to make sure everything's still going smoothly. And I continue this all the way through. All right, now I'm all the way through. The tapered portion's out and the main threads are all the way in. So now I can basically free turn this and I'll just run it in and out just to make sure it's all smooth. All right, once you've done that, you wanna go in and make sure that you actually clean out all of the threads. Also keep in mind that if you're doing any thicker material or anything like that, that you use cutting oil. Simple as that, it'll save your drill bit and the material and don't damage anything. So there you have it, works perfect. That is how you drill and tap your hole and then you can come back with a small file or a deburring tool and clean up that material that you see kind of on the edge there. I'm gonna go ahead and finish all these up and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If there's any information that I forgot to share and you guys noticed, please drop it down in the comments for other viewers and I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, please make sure to hit that thumbs up, leave a comment down in the comment section and as always, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. See you guys next time.